Welcome back, my calculus adventurers. Today, we're gonna to do the exact same definite integral in two ways, using a graph and geometry and using a classic antiderivative, using the fundamental theorem of calculus, evaluating the antiderivative. I think it's so beautiful that you can do the exact same problem two completely different ways. Um, some integrals are much easier using the graph method, others are much easier using antiderivatives. Most problems will use the antiderivative method, but here's an example of a problem that's about equally easy either way, so let's check it out. So the graph method works for problems where the integrand, which is the part inside the integral, if you look at it as a function, if it's something you know how to graph, and creates easy geometry shapes, then it's a great candidate for the graph method. So negative x plus 2, well, that's just a linear function with slope negative 1 and y-intercept positive 2. So it crosses up here at positive 2, the downward slope of negative 1, so it crosses the x-axis, positive 2. We're taking the definite integral from 0 to 3, so we're taking the net area between the graph and the x-axis. Net area, meaning that area above the x-axis will count as positive, and the area below the x-axis, when the graph is below the x-axis, will count as negative area. So the graph method works great when you have simple geometric shapes where you can find these areas just using geometric formulas that we have from previous math classes. Here we have a nice triangle. So this area is going to be a positive area. It's a triangle, so it'll be one-half base times height. One-half, the base goes from the origin, zero, to the x value, two, which is the x-intercept. So that base distance is two. And the height is gonna go um, all the way from zero to two. So it's also a height of two. One half times four is two. So the positive area will be positive two. And then we have to find this area that's gonna end up counting as negative because it's below the x-axis. One half base times height one half the base distance we're only taking the integral from zero to three so we're stopping at three so this base distance of the red triangle is only one from two to three it's one and the height of this triangle how do you figure out the height of this triangle well if we want to know the height of a function at a given x value you can just plug into the function y of 3 equals, using this, negative 3 plus 2 equals negative 1. So this is down at negative 1. This height of this triangle is 1, if you're, use, if you're just viewing it as a geometric shape. And so 1 half times 1 is 1 half. So when we find this definite integral using the graph method, we're going to take this area 1, which is going to count as positive, this definite integral is going to equal area 1 minus area 2. Area 2 counts as negative, and so we're going to have positive 2 minus 1 half. My cat's just celebrating by scratching. Okay, so 1 half, uh, subtract 1 half there, we get 1 and a half, or 3 halves if you prefer fractions. Okay, great. So there's our final answer there. The graph method, you just look at the graph of a function. Some functions are hard to graph. This one is easy to graph. And if you have a nice, easy geometric shape, you can avoid calculus altogether and solve this definite integral just using geometry, simple geometry. The more calculus-heavy approach and what's used for most definite integrals, the antiderivative method. And so for this case, we look at this function in here and we decide what integral rule do we have to use to find this integral. Um, I look at this as just a polynomial. I can just use the power rule for this one. So this is negative x to the one power. I have to find the antiderivative here. It's mean negative, just bring this 
negative one along for the ride. X to the one plus one over one plus one plus the antiderivative of a constant is just the constant times the variable in this context, which is two. So just, and this is evaluated from the same numbers, zero to three. This square bracket here just means evaluated from zero to three. You don't write the integral anymore because you already took the antiderivative. Tidying this up, this is negative x squared over two plus two x, and all of that is evaluated from zero to three. Now we just use continue using the fundamental theorem of calculus, which means we evaluate the antiderivative at the top number first minus the antiderivative with the bottom value plugged in. So first we plug in three for the x, negative three squared over two plus two times three. And then here, we have um, plugging in the bottom number, negative zero squared over two plus two times zero. Okay, and be careful, it's not negative three squared, it's negative three squared. So this can be negative nine over two plus six minus zero plus zero, so minus zero. And so this is negative 9 halves plus, if we want the common denominator, this is going to be 12 halves. And now you can add the numerators straight across. We have positive 3 over 2. You can see the exact same answer. So if you do the problem right, no matter what method you use to solve a problem, you should get the exact same answer because it's the same problem. And in this case, it was about equally easy. You might have a preference, the graph method over the antiderivative method for this particular problem. In some problems, you can only use the graph method because the integral is not doable using Calc 1 methods. And in most problems, I would say you want to do the antiderivative method because the graph is curvy and so we can't use geometry formulas to find the areas which is the whole purpose of calculus. How do you find the area under the curve um, for functions that are curvy and don't have simple geometry formulas? So let me know what other questions you have. Calculus definitely gets a little bit harder once they add in the integral, so let me know what you're getting stuck on, and I'd love to help. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.